Hi there, everybody. I'm Rosie from Teeny Tinkers. And I'm Pablo from Hopeful Creations. And you are watching, or listening to, uh, Unhinged. Unhinged. Uh, do- <laughs> Did we try and say it at the same time? Last time, I, I forgot completely about the name because I was so scared that I was going to interrupt you, and I just did. So nice. <laughs> All right, let's try. You are listening to Unhinged, Unhinged. a doll, a doll podcast. collector, doll collector podcast. podcast, a doll collector podcast. All right, good. It'll do. That's fine. <laughs> Today's episode, we are talking about what is in our doll customizer, artist, collector toolkit, and why. Exactly. So. Yeah, and uh, why what is in my toolkit is probably much better than what's in Pablo's toolkit, so. I mean, the, uh, listen, I'm sure there's you have way better things than me in some things, in some categories, so I oh, guess yeah. it is what it is. I was 150% <laughs> messing with you. But <laughs> um, okay, so on this podcast, while we are chatting, we do often craft or work on something else um so i'm going to be painting uh i guess i can show anybody who can see the visuals um these creepy little magnets i'm making for a convention um these are some of them but they're like they're my doll's heads and they're gonna be ma- like fridge magnets <laughs> that is freaking I awesome like, i have to say I, I thought it was a fun little idea um i have like some um like pokemon and like you know, like, uh, fan art style ones. They're all, like, drawing right now. I can actually show you one quickly. Here's, uh, here's Mew. That is so cool. Um, so I have, like, some fan art ones, but I'm doing all, I'm basically doing, like, a ton of tiny stupid face-ups, but <laughs> that's basically what I, so many stupid face-ups. And what are you working on, Pablo? So, um, I didn't really know what to do today, so I thought it would be a good idea to assemble uh, one of my Paduro's, is it Paduro's? Paduro's yeah, dolls. Pie. This is mm-hmm. Larali, even though I call her Lalari. <laughs> Lalari is actually a drag queen from Robots Drag Race, and I think it's cool. I love that. Cool. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, I love that. 10 out of 10 name. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. <laughs> okay, so I think we should start in your category, Pablo, I think we should start with your area of expertise. You mean sewing? Yeah, sewing. <laughs> I, that's absolutely what I meant. So no, uh, let, wigs. To clarify, of course. Um, so I think we we already established that we both have different ways to make wigs. You love your hot glue gun. Which looks pretty good since you did that video of me uh, kind of showing you how to make a wig. I have to say, mm-hmm. I, I think you have a pretty good skills at making wigs. Listen, making wigs with a hot glue gun, it's hard as fuck. I don't know if I can say that. Yeah, but if you're impatient, it's much better. I mean... Uh, so basically... Um, Whenever I have to recommend anyone to start making wigs, I think there's tons of tutorials out there. Um, but my number one recommendation is using a uh, glue that is not like super watery, but it dries more dense. I do personally like to use what it's called. It's still a white glue, but it's more like wood glue. Mm. So it's more thick and more dense. You know, you sometimes see at uh, a lot of YouTube tutorials, people doing like three layers and stuff. And it's like, I just have to make one. Yeah, I agree. Um, the multi layers is was a big put off for me exactly. with the white glue. Mm-hmm. And um, I can say that the wood glue Pablo uses, I did follow his wood glue method uh, exactly one time. And the wig cap outcome is superior to anything else I've done. It is very um very time consuming not as much as white glue but more so than hot glue no but it is it is if you're listen i think patience is something that you have to work through over the years i was Mm. definitely not that patient at the start 
and I'm still I'm not. But I just realized it is what it is, you know? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I mean, like, also wigs are, like, your thing. So, like, you're going to be more inclined to spend more time on them versus, like, I'm usually making wigs for, like, a quick doll customization on YouTube or something like that. And I'm not necessarily going to spend 10,000 hours on a wig. Exactly. Yeah. So besides the right glue, uh, what are you using to make wigs? So I, I think a lot of people like to use the actual head to make wigs. Mm. I do personally, uh, don't like to mess up with heads. I don't, I'm always scared that glue sticks into the head or it fucks up yeah. the face up or, or again, I'm so, uh, you can swear. Okay. You can swear. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, my kids watch my, my channel. It's okay. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. No. <laughs> so I like to use wet okay. expand balls. I just, uh, like to, uh, measure the circumference and I try to fit it the one that it's more like the um, the head that someone is asking me if it ends up mm. being uh, some sort of difference between the head cap and between the head and the bow i just try to stretch it a little bit once it's done and it's no problem i've never had anyone having any problem in that kind so you know yeah and of course so your set of strainers and curlers this is really important for me this small wand is a lifesaver, in my opinion. Oh, you you mean you don't use your hair straightener from when you were a 15-year-old emo <laughs> kid? You, that's not what you're using? I mean, I've never I mean, had... Uh, my hair has never been that um, long, so you know. To be fair, yeah. But also, like, can I just say, the fact that this is... Oh my god, I'm about to... Everyone knows I'm 30. But, like, the fact that I've been using the same thing for 15 years... Such as... I mean, it was good. It also matches your hair right now. It does. Purple. <laughs> Did you do that on purpose? <laughs> no, I don't I don't use that straightener because I use it for doll hair. So, I'm not okay. gonna, like... <laughs> let, me, let me just... Oh my gosh. So, um, yeah, like we mentioned, like, I you Like, you use, like the correct glue for what you're doing. Um, I do use hot glue. Uh, and that is mostly because, um, I like live in a state of doing everything all of the time. Um, and if I have like a bunch of, if I'm making wigs, I'm probably making like one wig and I want to like move on to the next step or I'm making 3000 tiny wigs. And I'm like, I need to make this not take 70 years. Um, and I also don't use the little foam balls like you use. I make my wig caps right on the doll's head. So I also can't be waiting for it to dry if I have to make a bunch of them. Um, because I'm impatient. <laughs> so I use, yeah, hot glue and hot glue guns. And I also use these, like, little finger protectors to apply it that my friend got me. Because I used to just go, like, bare finger and just burn myself every six seconds. And I also use silicone, um, they're like sometimes sculpting tools, sometimes they're like, like for like face masks, like the little bitty makeup silicone things. Um, that's basically like what I use to make my wigs. I will say though, since doing the video with you, Pablo, I did switch from using like random t-shirt material to buying pantyhose specifically to make wigs with because even with the hot glue this is a hot tip for anybody listening if you want to use hot glue use pantyhose because when you put the hot glue on it on other fabrics it's sometimes like once it stretches it kind of stays stretched out or sometimes it doesn't fit as snug as you want it to um, if you put it on the pantyhose the pantyhose like and it's pulled tight springs it back into place but not overly so so like pantyhose Pantyhose. Exactly. I do also think that when you use hot glue, uh, the fabric cannot be really thick because no. hot glue doesn't penetrate as much as uh, white glue, for example. So it's not, mm -hmm. it's, you want the wig cap to be hard enough. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And like, yeah, it doesn't penetrate, but also it's thicker. Like it doesn't, it's not nice and thin. It does add volume to the wig cap and if you don't want this wig cap that's like 
making the doll's head a centimeter, two centimeters bigger. Like, it's looking like a wig. Um, yeah, definitely use something super thin. That is also why I don't do more than one layer of glue. Um, mm -hmm. Because I used to make the three layers method and the wig ended up being like this thick. And of course, when oh, you yeah. glue hair on there, a, a, a centimeter of wig cap cannot be shown. It just, uh, it doesn't create the illusion that you want. Oh yeah, 100%. Yeah, and then like, you know what I don't like though? Like, I just want to, and if this works for... <clears throat> disclaimer to anybody watching at any point if we say we don't like something that you like that's totally fine we're talking about what we use and um my yum is going to be your yuck and your yuck is going to be my yum sometimes so like we just have to all agree to disagree <laughs> but you can leave it down in the comments over on youtube if you want to uh disagree with us because we would love to hear what you do anyways anyways um, so I don't like buying those pre-made, um, or even making my own, like, fabric wig caps that are sewn with the elastics. Why? I find them so, I find them so hard to work with. Um, also because I hate, I hate using those synthetic wig wefts that you can buy where it's the doll hair on the, mm -hmm. you can't. I can't glue them properly. They stick straight out. And if you glue them, you can't like boil wash them or anything. Exactly. I've been saving it's... some of those on different colors for years to make a wig like colorful and stuff. But every time I look at them, I'm like, even if I try to curl that this fabric, it's going to mm. look super stiff. And I don't yeah. know. I think there's a lot of people that are able to work synthetic fiber and make them look like super cute like these anime yes. dolls um they always have these blonde super cute uh wigs but for some reason i just cannot do that yeah i know i had such a hard time with it um it's not for me also i wanted to mention something that for my kid of wig making it's super important and it's this kind of of brush which is not a brush it's mm. actually if i open this it has two like uh blades and it helps okay. you make fringes it helps you create layers it helps you with the overall look if you want to like do some sort of mullet or something like that this is oh, yeah, yeah. so so helpful um, and you will always look me uh for example, cutting bangs with this. I don't like to use the scissors and go straight up. I just can't. It doesn't look I agree natural. With you. Yeah, I agree with you. I use scissors for the rough cut, like if I'm taking a bunch off and then I go in. But I use um, like an eyebrow razor, like those like uh, like cosmetic razors, the little ones. Um, and then I use a cat uh, cat brush to uh, brush my hair and brush the wefts, not brush my hair, that'd be weird, <laughs> but uh, brush out like doll hair and all that. So that's what I use. Uh, so the thing, the person that actually suggested me to use the, the cat brush to comb wigs was you. And I've been mm -hmm. using that method since then when I'm making the wigs and I want to mix colors, for example. And actually um, the result is so, so nice because for example, when I do viscous wigs, there's always going to be some fiber that is going to fall out. And it is what it yeah. is. And if I do that since the beginning, then the process of making the wig is way better and more comfortable for me. And when I brush the wig at the end, not a lot of fiber ends up coming out. So thank you, Rosie. You're my angel. Yay. <laughs> and you... <laughs> And I mean, like we both we both taught each other something. I just used a cat brush because that's what I had, and it's what I used to. Um, the first couple times I tried to make wigs, I used uh, I tried to brush out yarn, and like that is it works, but it's so labor intensive and stressful to me. Like I just can't. Um, I mean, I can, but I just hate it. But <laughs> if that's what it is, but um, it does like blend out. If you're trying to blend fibers together too. It looks really pretty. Um, and yeah, I don't use viscose like you do. Um, not for any particular reason other than I have a ton of 
like an acrylic roving. So it's like, it's yeah, like, like roving wool, like the, um, loose wool Mm -hmm. fibers where you pull it apart. And, uh, I love that because I barely have to brush it and I can just flat iron it or I can leave it unflat ironed for like kind of a puffier hair. Mm -hmm. Um, which I really like. So, I mean, like, when that runs out, will I get viscose? Maybe. Probably. It is silkier. It is softer. Uh, it has a nicer outcome. But I have that on hand, and it's been really easy to work with. So, yeah, you need I, to be mad. I think whatever doesn't involve uh, combing uh, yarn in that sense. I remember when I started doing wigs, I used satin, I used nylon, used whatever was on hand. And whenever I had to make something with yarn. Yes, unraveling and combing that was so time consuming. And at the end, you have to put prices depending on how long you do things. So it's yeah. just not worth it to put a wig for a thousand uh, euros being yarn. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I absolutely agree because yeah, time, effort, you know, all goes into pricing things. And if you have to spend three hours brushing out yarn like that's going to affect the price of the wig versus just being able to buy a fiber that's already brushed out for you, basically. Exactly. So was there anything else you use for wigs or anything that um, we haven't really mentioned here? Or can we move on to something I, I, I think we know can, anything we, about? Just having, for me, the Portex Pombo, the the curling iron and this tool are just essentials for me and using the right glue i think with that mixing you're going mm. to be the bomb at this not like i'm the best at doing this but you know it's been eh, some you're years pretty you know yeah you're pretty good at it like i gotta say um okay so then let's move on we're gonna move down the doll uh to face ups so we're moving from hair to face so I actually have done a few different videos on my YouTube channel now about like what I'm using for face ups and way back when I had a what's in my budget face up kit and it's if you're just starting I think a lot of those are like good options but like if I was going to recommend a product that you will probably use long term I would probably recommend nothing in that video to be honest. Um, it was what it was at the time. So for example, um, I'll start with pastels and what kind of pastels I like, because I do love a pastel. I use um, primarily pan pastels for my face up right now. That was a recent move because they are very bougie, very expensive. I they look um, so good. They're so creamy. Like, I'm so mad at like... The first time I used it, I was like, it's not going to be that much better. And I wanted to like bop myself in the head because it was, it was so nice. And it like smooths everything. And I was like, this is how they do it. This is how the artists are blending so seamlessly. Like with pastels, I was getting so mad about it. But um, I really do love pan pastels. I am currently using for these um, Mungio because I don't have enough colors for all my face-ups yet, but I'm hoping for my birthday, I get some. I mean, so those look see. expensive, so. Yeah, they, they are. So it's like a birthday present. Like, please, please buy me. <laughs> like to my partner, not you. <laughs> please <laughs> buy me <laughs> chalk pastels. Um, I really don't like the favorite castel ones, though. That was the first ones I started with. The color payoff is terrible. You have to layer it up so many times. And it, like, sometimes, like, streaks together. It's not... I don't like them personally. I think a you... problem that a lot of these friends have is that you can, for example, in terms of pencils, you can be buying uh, like watercolor pencils from Faber Castell, but mm-hmm. there's so many uh, like um, uh, like layers. Like you can buy the blue ones, you can buy the green box, you can buy the the, the yes. black box and all of them perform differently that if you don't really know a lot of, uh, which about ones? which ones to buy you can be bombed and you can hear someone saying like oh i love my favorite castles and then you try the ones that you bought out of not knowing mm, these differences and be like well maybe yeah. i'm the problem here but it's definitely not yeah it's it's so weird how like 
I mean, good art supplies, it's like as much as any people want to be like, I mean, you can make anything work if you really need to, mm -hmm. but um, good art supplies make such a difference in the outcome of whatever you're doing. And like chalk pastels are such like, they're like my go-to example of that because like the differences are sh like, it's shocking a little. I do remember when you started to like do so many, so much, not so much, but like to pastel with different tones of face and the glow up mm -hmm. of your face up was like, okay, Rosie's doing her thing. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I'm I'm really happy with my face up progression. They've gotten, uh, like in the last two years, like the differences are, it's very apparent. I'm very happy about it. So um, do you use pastels when you do face? I know you don't do a lot of your own face ups anymore, but um, you do some of them, I think, but. Mm -hmm. I mean, I is, I have three of your dolls to do face ups too. Four of mm -hmm. your dolls to do face ups too. Um, but when I do uh, my, when I do use pastels, my father, so my father is an architect and my sister is too. Mm. So my father had like a super big box of Rembrandt uh, pastels that I've been using okay. forever. I don't know where the box is right now, but I have them all stored and have so many different uh, pastel colors. And I, I've always heard that Rembrandt was a really good brand. So I was like, go for it, okay. you know? Yeah, that's, I mean, that's awesome. Especially if like it was already kicking around you didn't have to buy anything that's exactly that's a win i I, win. I i bought the pencils uh but as for pastels no no that's i mean i wish i had artist family <laughs> <laughs> well i guess architect i mean architect's kind of like an artist i an mean art it of is. buildings my father yeah. not only makes the whole the houses he also designs and stuff so that's very cool. <laughs> 10 out of 10 to Pablo's 10 dad. out of 10. <laughs> um, I think the other, like, other face-up supplies I like, I, for, it's kind of hard because there's so many different ways to paint a doll. Exactly. Um, mm -hmm. I like, you mentioned pencils. For pencils, I used to use um, the Faber-Castells, and I did not love them except the white ones worked weirdly well i don't know what that's about but they worked weirdly well um i switched to derwent ink tense pencils and i still love those um those are i think my forever pencils i don't think i'll find another one i like better and i also still love so this is the one thing from my budget face-up supplies that i'm still like an activist for is uh, like these are the same ones like from three years three or four years ago like you can see all the leathering is worn off of them like but it's just like cheapo like fifteen dollars a set watercolor brush pens and like they're so easy to use um and like as long as you keep the caps on they last forever so like cannot recommend these enough either but yeah i remember when you first started doing your videos using those, uh, as you said, those um, mark markers. Yeah. That you still use, but the, of course, the way you use them is different and you don't use them for everything as, like for example, no. you used to do, to, used to do. Like lips and everything. You know, this is like liner, like that's what I'm, I'm drawing on right now is like l tiny liner, lashes, brow hairs. Like that's what I use these for, for like, what you would need to use um, like the tiniest brushes for otherwise. Mm -hmm. Now, the color payoff is not always like it is lighter. So if you're painting a darker doll, this is not going to work for you. But um, in general, like on lighter resin tones and stuff like these work pretty well. I don't like I love these and I love uh, gouache paint, which is like another water based paint, um, which I use nail art brushes for. That's the secret sauce. Not these like tiny BJD miniature brushes that cost $20 a brush. It's freaking nail art brushes. That's what you buy. That is actually um, something I wanted to talk. Uh, you don't really need to spend so much money uh, on brushes when you have like, no. you can go to Primark and buy the cheapest one and those work amazingly. So. Yeah, absolutely. 
brushes are one thing I think um, can, like, I think if you're painting, like, oil paintings or something, like, your brush quality is going to make a difference. Mm -hmm. But I think for, like, tiny lines, as long as you just want the hair, like, the end, the, I don't know, the tip to be something that stays relatively pointy. Um, and the nail art brushes also come with, like, caps, which is really nice. So you're not, like, getting them flattened out or anything. Uh, I love mine. Like, I got mine from Amazon, again, for, like, or maybe AliExpress. But, like, they're not expensive. They're not. So, which is good, because if you're like me, and sometimes you forget them with paint on them, and they are, like, frayed and terrible, uh, they cost 50 cents, so I can buy another one. It's not the end of the world. So. And you can always buy the powerful, the powerful ones or the ones to paint really detailed work, like maybe buy those separately but then yeah. you're because at the end of the day we spend so much money on materials it's true materials are super expensive it's very sad i mean i get it but like still you know exactly cry. makes sense um also besides nail art brushes i like uh flat tipped makeup brushes like an example would be it weren't i just had one oh like these guys mm -hmm. or like makeup brushes um these, like, are so nice. Like, the rounded tip ones are really good for, like, fluffing things out and, like, blending. But, like, if you need to press color on... I'm not using these because the heads are too small. Um, but, like, this is what I really like. Is these, like, flat... But any makeup brush. Like, all my... Look at my cute little cup, by the way. It's so cute. But there's, like, a random doll hair in there. But, like, I don't use this. It's just in there, but... Like, just different um, makeup brushes and stuff. I do also remember using, like, the one that you just said, I, do, I don't use them. I think mm -hmm. when I started doing face-ups, I thought that one would help me blur some sort of mistakes. But it ended up just mixing everything up and making it yeah. worse. <laughs> yeah, you're like, oh, it, it blurred yeah. everything together. <laughs> exactly. Everything. And it seems like I always make the same mistake. <laughs> That's so funny. You're just like, I another one. Another what one. What could go wrong? I fucked up again. <laughs> okay, work, I guess. <laughs> I wonder what happened. Oh my gosh. Um, one thing that I have that I use that other people love and use all the time is an airbrush. I hate my airbrush. I hate it with a passion. Um, you, you have to like scrub it out like every single time you use it. Um, like, and I mean, like, pull apart all the little screws, clean and like, it's like, if I need to use it for a face up, I'm going to spend five minutes using it for the face up and like 25 minutes cleaning it after. It's the bane of my existence. I hate it. And it, there's always issues with it. Like, I commend anyone using an airbrush for their face ups because it's freaking hard. Um, and they're so finicky. Like, you guys are superheroes. All of you who do that. And sometimes for people like us that have no patience at all, it's just not worth it. It's I can't. Like, if, if I'm doing a face-up, I'm not going to spend 25 minutes cleaning out my airbrush or, like, troubleshooting it in the middle of my face-up. I'm like, I will just use the freaking chalk pastels. Let me just spend more money on good chalk pastels, and I can never look at my airbrush again. It will be fine. Exactly. The other tools I like to use are, like, these little Q-tip friends. And then I have these, like, micro brushes they're like tiny ridiculously small and I use them for like corners of mouths like in eye corners like they're tiny um I've never seen those those look so cool they're for like those like Gundam figures like you know what I mean like I hey I check out a lot of art supplies from like the miniature painting people mm -hmm. and they've worked well for me um the other thing I swear by is human lashes, not doll lashes. I think they look more natural than those, like, strip lashes you get for dolls. Yeah. Um, and they're more dramatic, which I like. If I'm going to bother putting lashes, which isn't all the time, they're going to be they're gonna be dramatic. They're going to be mm -hmm. a lot. I think for me, uh, what works when looking for lashes is looking for, like, the human lashes you use. Some people use for lower lashes. Mm, yeah, that works well too. 
Mm -hmm. Cause then when you look for the doll ones, it's always super thin and they have all the same length and they don't look as fine. Yeah, that's that's my issue with them too, actually. Um, besides like the human lashes too, um, to put them on, I used to use Aileen's White and I find it doesn't dry as clear as they're claiming it does. So I bought the, uh, this one, the Aileen's Clear Tacky Glue, and that's worked a lot better, and I have like 20 pounds of it, so like, I'll have lashes forever. I, I've been looking for that brand for a long time, because in Spain we don't have that, and I see a lot of people mm. on YouTube using that brand of different things, because they, I think they have some sort of um, waterproof glue. Yeah. Uh, and I'm yeah, always yeah. so envy, and I'm like, oh, gosh, we we have those. Oh, I'm sure, yeah, because the supplies you can get are compl like a lot of it's going to be really different from what I can get, and then exactly. vice versa. Mm -hmm. Um, for like sealant, like, do you get you can get Mister Super Clear, obviously. Yes. 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 That's good. Um, is it like ridiculously overpriced, like it is in Canada? I think. Uh, whenever I've gone to, because I I have like a store here uh, next to, or close to my home, uh, mm -hmm. where it, that sells like uh, board games and also says sells paint for Warhammers and mm -hmm. all these action figures. And they have it for like 14 euros or so. I don't know how much that is in Canadian. That uh, would be like... 14 USD, like the US and Euro is pretty similar, I think, at right now, yes. maybe. So that's not bad at all. Um, most places here, when I'm looking for it, it's 28 or 24 can Canadian. So like 20 euros, basically 20 USD, which is still. But there's this one place. Watch me like leak my source. And now I'm going to have to. I should like. I mean, do I keep my source in Canada? <laughs> oh my god. Okay, but um, there's this one place that um, will get it in stock for like 14 Canadian, which is like 11 US maybe. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, when that happens, I'm like, I'm gonna buy eight cans. Like, <laughs> I just like buy so much all at once because it's so expensive otherwise. I mean, but the problem with Mister Super Clear is that you never know if you're going to get a good. Like, you know that you can get the mm -hmm. bad ones, right? Like, you can get a bad batch. Yeah. Is it that... Yeah, one time I sprayed one of my dark resin dolls with it, and it was like, I sprayed her with, um, like, hand snow or whatever, like that spray snow. I was like, what the hell has happened? Like, it was the weirdest thing that's ever happened to me with uh, Mr. Super Clear. But it's also the only sealant that I don't, like fight with otherwise or it doesn't dry glossy or like take forever to dry i i haven't i haven't used many though to be fair so i in spain and i think also in the uk we have one that's called citadel yeah we have that i've I never think, used it though um and i think it was citadel i cannot remember and i i know a friend of mine uses that and like likes it way way more than oh. Mr. Super Clear for example. Okay. Maybe I will try that. I've never been uh um uh, I've never been a Mr. Super Clear fan, so you know. Interesting. Yeah, I've um the only other ones I've used, I used um I can't even remember. They're just like random brands and then I one time used a Mod Podge one and not like the sticky one, like the clip Ugh! Terrible! Awful! Oh my god, I hated it. Um, so, like, do not recommend Mod Podge Sealer. Like, the spray one. It's 0 out of 10. It's awful. Gross. I mean, the thing is, at the end of the day, these, the people that buy those kinds of spray do it for all the things rather than painting dolls. Mm -hmm. So we're the... so specific. Yeah, or I mean, like, they, it's that whole, like, if that's what they're used to, they know exactly how to work with it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. This one looks a little, she's like, I'm a little confused. Because I'm know? just freehanding the eyebrows. I'm like, I don't, I don't care. Wow. I can't spend 10 years making the eyebrows perfect. You're honestly <laughs> doing such a great job with that. Um, well, I've got... 
I think I Three. just finished stringing oh, I think so, the pops. this body. However, uh, since we're talking, I don't know if it, maybe I fucked up when I was choosing what to put on, but you know, it's okay. If, I can always redo it. Oh, that's fine. I mean, like, I'm going way slower than I otherwise would doing these face-ups because we're chit-chatting. So, like, I mean, it is what it is. Exactly. But, I, but I'm still doing it. So, you know, there's... I'm still out here doing the work. You're up, bro. Slowly. I know. <laughs> okay, so... I think the other thing we both have uh, experience with in this, like, doll materials, doll toolbox is 3D printing and uh, resin and all of that for... 3D printing ball jointed dolls. Exactly. So, so let me hear what you like. So at this point, I've used some brands and some types of resins. Um, also, those resins usually get upgraded over time, and mm. the, the the one that was before is not on on in stock again and stuff. Um, I think when it comes to resin, I like to use any cubic ABS-like mm. resin, even though that doesn't exist anymore. And now it's like ABS Pro 2, whatever. Mm. And it's really different than the previous one, which is like, I guess, work. Um, I've heard any cubic works exactly like Elegoo for anyone who is interested or doesn't know which one to choose. I think they work the same. I agree. Um, so who knows? Who knows? The, the ABS-like ones, for sure. I think that they are very similar as far as um, performance and as far as, like... I think the cost is pretty similar most of the time, at least where I am. Did I eat my own hair? I did. Was it good? I was like, no, it's not. <laughs> Zero out of ten. <laughs> do, do not recommend. Um, my favorite resin right now is uh, Zhao Jin, which is like, it's really random. But like, they were a company that sent me some random resin to try. And I was like, I don't know about this. And it's the most beautifully performing resin I've ever used. It is a little expensive. But it's, it, ugh, it's so wonderful. For dolls, like, it's like scratch resistant. Um, it doesn't bloat very much. Like, I'm just like, I'm so smitten. When I can get it, I do get it. Um, my backup is the Elegoo um, ABS-like. So yeah, same same kind of idea. It's more scratch resistant and uh, better performing, I find. And a little more elastic than the other resins. I find the ABS one is a little, like coming off the print plate, like a little stretchier. If that makes sense, like a little, a little rubbery or a little more give to it than some of the other ones. Could just be me though. I've never had the opportunity to buy. I mean, mine's pretty expensive, but I've never had the opportunity to buy this. Like, because I know, for example, in the U.S., there's way more colors than the ones I'm able to buy here. For yeah. example, and of course, when it comes to brands, it's the same thing. Uh, mm -hmm. Good thing that any Kubi at least has like a uh, station here in Europe, and I can get them for even free when the when the actual purchase is big, you know. Oh yeah, that's awesome. Um, I mean that's like I don't often get free resin, but when I do, it's the best day of my life. Oh, um, <laughs> I mean the only other time I've gotten free resin is I ordered Anycubic resin from AliExpress because Anycubic has a store on AliExpress and it's actually their store. It's not like some random and it's cheaper than Amazon to everybody listening a lot. They put sales on where it's like buy two, get two free. So you have to buy like the one kilogram ones. But if you're buying like white or beige, like it's yeah. big, strong recommend. Um, but anyways, they shipped me like it was like four one kilogram bottles because again, buy two, get two. Um, or get one, maybe. I don't know. It was a, it's a good deal, though. And it got lost. And it was just gone for, like, three months. So they refunded me. I repurchased. They sent me a new one. Uh, and that new one came in, like, two weeks later. Like, it's pretty fast. And then uh, a week ago, so, like, three months after the fact, the other one showed up. And it was just here. And I'm like, oh, 
Okay, thank you. I mean, I will. I will keep this. Like, thank you very much for that. I once had a, had a problem too with any cubic actually, and I I think I bought like five kilos or something, and they mm -hmm. sent me ten, oh. but of random colors, which was like okay work I guess, and that <laughs> was the time that I for the first time I did like the clear color ones because mm, they yes. decided to send me clear green black gray and stuff which was okay i mean whenever resin, that yeah. happens it's at the end of the day it's a free resin that i can yep. do dolls of and someone is going to like them yeah so you know. i i do like the um the transparent resins i don't like using them a hundred percent as is unless i'm trying to make something super clear um like here's a i'm gonna just i'm just previewing all the weird little things i make here's like a random little art doll okay he's not done but he's he's stupid like he's supposed to be stupid but this is a 50 percent mix of transparent resin and um the abs like like i just mixed them together and uh it gives like a porcelain effect like it's almost like semi-translucent it's super pretty um i do like that look and i'll just if i want it to be a little more clear i'll do more like a 25 percent abs to three quarters um see-through but i do actually like the see-through resin and i find it performs almost as well or near like as well as the um like the other ones like the the standards or the abs like i find it very comparable to like how many print fails i have or how difficult it is to do the re like the printer settings and all that mm -hmm. i've actually whenever i print clear i print it with the same parameters as white and I've yep. never gotten a fail, so you know, maybe yeah, exactly. You, maybe that happened with the with the brown with the ones that were previous to us being on the three D printing game. Mm, so you know, because I do remember a lot of people tell me, "Oh, don't try to mix a uh, color into resin; your three D printer is going to break." And I was like, "What the hell are you talking about? I just mix mm. a ton of." drops of resin and the doll turned out beautifully. So I yep. think maybe the technology was not as evolved mm -hmm. as before and people were kind of scared and we were sort of like guinea pigs when it came to try to make cooler things, you know? Yeah, I also think it depends on the kind of tints you use. Like that was something I had written down too that I want to talk about. Like. I tried using the powder tints and I hate them. They're so hard to get like to mix all the way in. Um, mm -hmm. And you should, I believe, I avoided them on purpose, but you should avoid um, alcohol ink based tints because they can separate in the vat and like make weird marks and stuff in your doll. And it can, I know it doesn't always, but some brands will like separate and like the color will like reform in the droplets and like mess up your prints and cause failures. But, mm -hmm. um, I, I use like a, it's a liquid. It's not alcohol based. I'm not, I'm not a hundred percent sure what it is, but uh, it's not alcohol and I don't have any print issues. And I put out, like I can put a bunch of color in and it still prints just fine. Yeah, I think I had the ones that I use right here and this works wonderful. That's exactly what I use. This is not sponsored, but if this brand wants to sponsor us, they can email us or look for us on <laughs> Oh my god, please. As long as it's not Timu. <laughs> Don't let so... Timu sponsor you. <laughs> People will come for you. <laughs> so have you ever tried, for example, uh, glitter, um, micro glitter and stuff? Yeah, I have actually... Um... Do I have any nearby? I do. Okay. So I have these flowers I did um, for like some micros. I just had them right here. Uh, this one's really painted. You're not going to be able to see. But I this one's got mica powder in it. So that's what that sheen is. And wow. then I've, I've put bigger glitter. I don't recommend that because it doesn't like mix. It like can stick out and it's really, it's kind of weird. Um, but I do like the mica powder. It is a pain in the patoot to clean out of the vat after because it's like cleaning glitter out of anything. Um, so if you're going to do glitter, like commit to doing a bunch of stuff in glitter and just accept that there will be glitter in everything for the next like 10 cycles. And then, yeah. and then it's fine. 
and then it's okay. So I think a pro tip I would give to anyone uh, when it comes to 3D printed, for example, is try to make all the browns and then do all the lighter colors just so mm. you don't have to clean the bat completely and you can mix uh, everything in the bat afterwards so it mm -hmm. doesn't, you know, because if you mix black with white, of course, you're going to get streaks. But if you mix, for example, pastel yellow with a little bit of pastel blue, you can easily mix that in. That is how I do everything. Like right now, um, let me just tilt everyone down. Can you see all the colors of things I'm working on? Um, and my YouTube people, here you go. You can see what I'm doing. But um, I make all my, I print like a plate of white and then I'm like, and now you're yellow and now you're green and now you're blue because then you only have like this much of the like say yellow and then you just add some blue and then like you have this much of the the green and now it's blue and you just warp your way through the rainbow once you hit purple you can start going brown and then like lighten up to beige again and like at that point I usually wash before going back to white because if there's anything in the vat when you put white in it's like it's over for you you're like it's not white anymore so I think people don't realize that every time that you clip the bat, that film gets mess messed up. And yeah, I it can weaken the film. I also heard that if you put a lot of alcohol when cleaning that film, you're doing it worse even. So I never clean my vat with alcohol. I wipe it out with, um, so I like rinse it out with like water, like I do a water wash in it. Um, and then I put it, I have an ultrasonic cleaner, which is like, I freaking love that thing. It's super annoying and loud, but it's like a big tub of water and it like super vibrates everything to clean it. Uh, so I'll put it in there after. Um, and like, it comes out like super clean, but like, I have to leave it in the ultrasonic cleaner for like half an hour usually. So it's like, and it's really, the sound is terrible, like nails on a chalkboard. Uh, mm -hmm. but you know, just close the door and walk away and it'll, it'll be okay. Exactly. But yeah, um, um, you're right though. It does affect the film. So what, what do you want to do? What do you want to use when it comes to sending dolls and assembling them? Mm. Like, cause I know a lot of people like to use sanding sponges. Mm. Um, others like to use, for example, sanding paper. Yeah. I, so when I sand, I start. Uh, if needed, sometimes you don't even need it. Uh, my Zhao Jin resin is an example of not needing to do this. But um, if you use, like I have two Dremels. So I have like a plug into the wall, um, rip your fingernails off if it touches your fingernail, off, like type uh, Dremel. And I mostly use that for like the bigger dolls for like supports on the flat pieces. And then I have like a a plug in and charge like people would use for their nails and stuff. And I use polishing pads a lot. Um, so I don't like destroy the detail, but I will use that first if needed. And then I always wet sand because I hate resin dust. Listen, Thanks. for example, I don't like to do wet sand. So it's so strange that you tell me that you prefer that. And I'm completely opposite because I feel like when I wet sand, I cannot see how the thing is going you know that is true so when you wet sand it like gives you a false illusion that it's like cleaner than it looks or it's smoother than it looks so i do my initial wet sand and then i let the pieces dry and uh usually it's a bunch of pieces so i'll like wet sand put the piece wet sand put the piece and by the time i'm done the first pieces are dry and then i use these like tiny little dry sanding sponges um i've got they're like this big for in the corners and all of that. And then um, I finish with um, magic eraser, like a buff and cleaning with a microfiber cloth. So it's like a freaking 20 step process. <laughs> it's a commitment. It is. Um, whenever I'm making a brown doll, I mm -hmm. have to use yes or yes and magic eraser. I have to do a last send with a magic eraser. Yes or yes. When it comes to the white ones, or the, you know, the pasta ones. Yeah. I don't need it to. Like, the doll looks fine. But for some reason, with darker skin tones. Oh, look at Clovers. They're so tiny. Yeah, the resin tone makes a difference in, like, mm -hmm. how long it takes to finish and stuff, so. 
I wonder if uh, when casting those, uh, that issue is also there. You know yes. what I mean? Or it's bigger or smaller. Than... So my my caster um, sandblasts the dolls. So it's like a, a gun <laughs> that shoots tiny, tiny grains of sand at your doll to sand it. Like, doesn't, it, like, it takes, like, eight seconds. Like, I don't know. Like, it's super fast. It's, like, angeringly fast, I think. Um, but if they do it on the dark resin, uh, it, like, can look scratched. So when I have my dark dolls made, like, my dark Junie, my dark um, So the Pops and all that, when they were made, I did not have them sandblasted. They're, like, slightly shinier than my other dolls. But cast dolls, you don't have to sand, like, 3D printed dolls either. It's just, like, a finish um, to make them more matte, but, um, I don't have that done on my dark resin dolls because it makes them look weathered. <laughs> they look rough <laughs> when you do that. I mean, you can ask him if he can send one of those to each one. He did. I had one sent sandblasted and one not, um, of So The Pop, and I was like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't look great. Yeah, no, not, no, thank you. I'll pass. Um. <laughs> Yeah, but it's like, um, it's a trade-off, though. If, like, you really hate when the doll has any shine to it, like, you'll probably go ahead. Mm-hmm. So, but. I think when it comes to dolls being uh, shiny or not, that's really personal. However, I don't like shiny dolls at all. Mm. And I think that's why I, I for example, don't, don't go up to five thousand when it comes to five thousand grid when it comes to three different adults because mm -hmm. i like my dolls to look matte i don't either i like i always try and finish them matte yours are always like so beautifully matte like it's like goals but um i agree it's like it's also like the time you're gonna spend sanding it to a polish is gonna be like wild it's just not worth it it's, it no, is it's not. not it is not for a for finish long... most people don't even want mm -hmm, exactly yeah, but for you. some reason, even though it takes more time, it looks more cheap. That's true. It does. It looks like cheap plastic when it's uh, when it's shiny. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm Interesting. But um, I also like. I mean, some resins. That's one other thing about like resin quality. Just to like hop back on resin is if you're using a cheap resin, it's so much harder to sand, or it's more brittle. Um, the resins I don't like for that. I don't like anything water washable. I really wanted to because I was like, water washable seems like it's going to be a lot more eco-friendly. Like it's going to be a lot better to like, you know what it's I mean? Not. It's brittle. Like if the resins are brittle and terrible and, um, I, it's not good. I hate them so much. Like, <laughs> but also as far as I know, they contaminate basically the same. To the environment mm. so you know yeah I'm, I'm sure it's pretty similar it just makes you not buy so much alcohol maybe but that's like... what it is it's that's what i meant by more eco-friendly like not having okay. to buy the alcohol not the resin itself i'm sure it's just as resin <laughs> yeah um yeah because like do... as no you you no i mean um I remember when I used to buy the like the one that we all started working with, the rapid, the fast one. Yeah. I, every time I try to send the head, for example, I'm one that likes to push, not push the head into the table, but you know, make some effort just so it's not as hard to send. And yeah. those pieces tend to break, yeah. tended to break. And now with the ABS one that I use, nothing breaks even if it falls even nothing nothing yeah. it's amazing yeah um because i mean like especially for like tiny fingers and stuff like you use a weak resin and like you're gonna end up with a bunch of broken fingers it's not great exactly um, and like for cleaners i've tried um there's some like r like resin printed dudes resin printing oh my god resin printing like dudes on youtube that they're like use this like green cleaner green machine or something i can't remember i did try it and it's it leaves everything a bit shiny so i wasn't super happy about that um 
and I just really prefer using isopropyl alcohol. I buy the 99% and I do add a little bit of water just so it's like kind of drags it out a bit further and you only need 80% to clean your resin prints. And I actually can't find 80%. I can find 90%, like 99%, 98%, and then like 50%. So like I just water down my 99s. The thing water is down. also the bigger your printer is, the bigger the, the tank of your washing machine is going to be. I remember when I had the Elego Mars 2, I didn't mm -hmm. have to fill it that much. Now my 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 tank uses like five liters of alcohol and it's like yeah. oof. I didn't That's get expensive. the I didn't get the bigger cure wash cure station for my bigger printer. I would I probably should. I instead remove the pieces off the plate and put them in the little basket. Um which I don't love because then I have to wash the plates separately. I do want to get one of those magnetic plates for it though that you can like put oh fancy but like that's on my like to try list i really want one um they're probably not even expensive i just have not got to it yet and i'm just like oh learning how to use a new thing i have i have so much to do already <laughs> i do oh. remember like i was talking with someone at a convention and they were talking to me about how good P pla printers are and etc and it was like oof i wish i had one However, just thinking about learning how to use a new printer when I still have misprints, I don't know how I got got them with mm -hmm. my actual one. Yes, it's enough for me. Like, I cannot. I cannot. Yeah, I had one, um, and I didn't love it because it was a lot harder to like level and get like the settings correct, so it didn't have like really bad print lines or like I I'm not a huge fan of them. Um, but they're nice for, like, props and stuff. But even so, I just make everything out of wood. Like, for my dioramas and stuff. Mm -hmm. I just can't be bothered. So, oh, yeah. Rosie, do you think we should be uh, kind of, like, making more conclusions? Or do you have anything else right down? So, I also had, um, like, because you had mentioned, like, doll assembly. And you kind of went over, like, the sanding sponges. But I was wondering, like, as far as... Um, like elastic magnets like where are you sourcing yours and um what kind do you get that kind of thing so i unfortunately don't have like the cool elastics that a lot of people get for their dolls because those are so expensive so i buy the ones that you can buy at fabric stores and such like the okay. sewing stores those work fine maybe these are not the best elastics in the world but work um and for me to keep the prices the way they are, um, I guess it's the best. I buy mm. my magnets on Amazon because I have not mm -hmm. found them anywhere else. Like if I go to any store here that's dedicated to kind of something constructional or anything, there's not like a lot of to choose. So I buy them on okay. Amazon. I know a mm. lot of people find them on Aliexpress, however, Every time I've looked into it, the prices are similar. So I would rather buy mm. them on Amazon. And when yeah. it comes to hooks, um, you have to be, I feel like you have to be very, uh, like for example, with the doll lashes, you have to look mm. for things that are made for the average person, not actually for the person that is making dolls. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. What about so you? I get, I get my elastic on Amazon as well. Most of the time I have started getting it from AliExpress. Um, but they're like, I have some here, but they're these ones, like this is my go-to for like test stringing MSDs or legs of my teeny tinies. This is like a 1.5 or a two millimeter, I think elastic bunt, like cord. Um, I have that in black too, because the set, the only wear place I can find it, like the seller in Canada that has it um, in this exact size, you have to buy a black one and a white one together. So I have all this freaking black elastic. I'm like, uh, well, I guess I have that now. Um, so I use that for test stringing prototypes. I use, this is jewelry elastic. That's for like my micros and only for their arms because they don't need as much tension. Um, this is what I use for their legs. It's a um, 0.75 or 0.5 
elastic cord. Uh, yeah, that's basically it. Um, oh, and I have this one too that I use sometimes for the micro arms as well. But um, it's I find it like it's a little thicker than the jewelry elastic, but it's also like it frays more, so I'm afraid it's gonna snap. So I don't use it super often. Um, I use it more for like props and stuff like that. So, and um, my magnets I buy from. Um, I used to get them on Amazon, but they are actually cheaper to get the rare earth magnets I use from AliExpress for me. So now I order them uh, there and I can get exactly the sizes I need or like multi-packs of sizes. And so um, kind of a mix. Yeah, Amazon, AliExpress, all the things. Uh, the other thing I'm going to recommend for assembling dolls is forceps slash hemostats things. Like those like, they're like a medical tool, mm -hmm. but they like, clamp and hold. I saw Allison from Munique's Poupées dolls use them and I'm like that will save my life and it did. So like 110% recommend those. I do actually have one of these. I don't know if you can Ooh. that I use whenever I want to hook the elastic into and I don't want it to like go. Um uh, but mm. you can also like the clips that you use for clothing when they're drying outside. Mm. You can use them. Yeah. So, you know, it's oh, yeah, all about being that. creative here. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. Um, I like the hemostats because they're like, you can get all different sizes. And um, I find them like, when you pinch them together, they lock. They like, there's like a thing and it, they never come undone. Mm -hmm. um, and I think for like, if you're stringing like a big MSD doll that you need, not a 3D printed one, like a cast one that you need a lot of tension for. You can like haul it up and then like clamp it and like leave it and it'll hold even though it's like a billion tons of pressure. I don't know how much pressure. Don't ask me math, but um, I, I really like them. I've never tried clothespins, but I can totally see that working um, on smaller dolls. And then you, people have that around their house and it's a lot more convenient, I think, than medical equipment. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, right, we're just having uh, some sort of circuitry, so you know. Yeah, like, I'm mean, like, let me just put you back together, small <laughs> doll. It'll be fine. Oh, my gosh. Uh, the only, I guess, I'd like, maybe the, like, final thing we should visit is if there's anything you want to try, like, that you haven't yet, that you've heard things about, or maybe saw somebody do, and you're like, mm, mm. besides magnetic print plates on <laughs> I mean, 3D <laughs> printers, because, like, that seems just super convenient. So I personally feel like, so I'm not good at sewing because I don't mm. have, have patience, but I feel like I would be good if I knew how to use a sewing machine. However, mm. every time I look into a video of how it works, I don't understand it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Ab absolutely. Um, I used to get so mad. Oh, I used to get so mad at mine. Like we used to like fight a lot, me and my sewing machine, but we, we get along now. We're good. Uh, I just know how to prevent it from clogging and like getting stuff in it. And that's like the biggest thing. But, um, I think my thing I want to try is, um, a rock tumbler. <laughs> Um, I saw somebody, I, it's a small artist here and I can't think of who it is, but they like here on like over on Instagram, small artist over on Instagram who used a rock tumbler for doll parts. And I don't think you could do like hands or anything too small because you would probably like just grind away the fingernails. But I think for like head pieces, chest pieces, um, throwing them in with a fine grit and just like leaving it would be so nice. Um, like if they can just do like 80% of the sanding for me, like I am here for it, but they're so loud. <laughs> like they're so loud. Um, so I'm like stressed about getting one and leaving it running. And like my whole house is trying to sleep because my studio's in my house and it, it just like being this loud, like ka -chow, ka -chow, ka -chow, all night. So I think I've heard about, um, about that. However, I'm always like, what if I spend so much money into this and it ends up not working? Like, yeah, that's. I feel like at least I fit into the kind of artist 
that needs to be super sure about what what he's buying because I don't have yeah. much money to spend on random stuff. Mm -hmm. I agree. It's too expensive to like. It's like I want to borrow somebody's. Exactly. <laughs> Let me try. Or I Let want that person that. to make a specific video on, on on what she bought, how she uses, etc. Yes, help me. My uh, caster said that they like sandblast. I was like, how much is a sandblaster? They're expensive. They're like, <laughs> like the tiny ones with a pen, like a little sandblasting pen are like 500 Canadian dollars. So I was like, Ugh. and they're huge. And I'm just like, Ugh. but I hate sanding so much that I'm like, mm -hmm. <laughs> but no, I can't, I can't justify it. So then I'm like, maybe a rock tumbler, but I need more information. Mm-hmm. So those are that's the main thing that I was like I want to try that someday. I also have written down that I would love to be able to make furniture. Oh yeah. And print it I... and sell it at, for example, conventions and stuff. I think that would be a great idea, and I don't think maybe doing some simple stuff would be too hard. No, I mean like I've done three D. I don't sell them. Like it's just like another. It's just another thing. Um, <laughs> Like, it's too much, but, like, I do 3D, I 3D sculpted things specifically for my diorama. Like, I have, um, uh, let me creep in here. I have this, like, my tiny 3D printer I made. Um, I, I sculpted the cover, and I do plan on one day, I keep forgetting, but I need to print it in, like, the clear resin with a bit of red, so it's, like, the real cover, and, like, a little tiny version of my camera, like... It is fun. I don't know that anybody wants a th tiny 3D printer, but like, I made one. <laughs> it's ridiculous. If you want the file, Pablo, I'll send you the file. Like, I, you can make yourself one. I was going to tell you, I have some clear red resin mixed up. Oh. So, you, you I Make mean, me a cover. If you send me the file of the cover and you oh. let me print one for me, we're done with it. I mean, I have to send you a package soon, so you know. Yeah, like, I'll definitely send you the file, because <laughs> that, um, I think that would be something really fun to, uh, to make, or, like, I made, like, tiny wig stands of, uh, my dolls, which I sent to you, but I have them printed, oh, they might be, they're in my Christmas decorations right now, because I put Santa hats on them, but I have versions this big for my diorama, like, they're, <laughs> they're, like, tiny, um, I love tiny props, I like sculpting, when I'm, like, because I'm, like, okay, well, if I want this for my diorama, like, Honestly, like, sculpting or trying to pay, like, $50 from a miniature shop for something, I'm like, I'm not, I understand why, but I'll just make it myself. If I can, if I can make it myself. Exactly. But yes, I'll send you that file. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if I ever come to your house, you someday, I will bring my Pablo and I, we can do a Photoshop of me doing wigs on those tiny... Uh, oh wig, wig, uh, wig, uh, stand, so, you know. Oh, that would be so cute. <laughs> I mean, come on over. I wish. Um, I know. I know. But, um, there's, like, I don't know, I had it. this is, like, a side tangent, <laughs> but, uh, as, just for little props and stuff, I did have, like, some STL files, like, up on my website, and, like, Nobody was buying them, so, like, I removed them. So, oh, I didn't um, know about that. I didn't have, like, my printer stuff. It was just, like, little, like, it, like, bunums, like, little <laughs> tiny characters and stuff, and, like, food and stuff. But, um, I removed them, but, um, I do do kit, I do do, <laughs> I do kit prints sometimes, um, and that works. But, anyways, one day. <laughs> <sighs> but, yeah, as far as, like, toolkit, though, that. I think that summarizes pretty much all of the basics. If there's any tools we forgot to mention here or didn't talk about, like, let us know in the comments and Pablo and I will both try and respond, like, what we use for that situation or whatever. Or if you use something different, you could also let us know about that. I think kind of like the most important thing here, at least for me, is that we all use different kind of stuff and we can be recommending different things but at the end of the day what anyone uses is so personal and if it works for you it works for you and props to you you know what I mean 
Absolutely. If I wasn't um, able to make that work, maybe the problem is me and it's not you, you know? Yeah, and it's also that, like, your different situations, like, like Pablo with his wig glue, um, I also agree that the glue he uses and his method is superior to what I do, but I also don't have the same motivation to spend as long on wigs because I'm not really charging for them or anything. Pablo, any wig I sell is basically a wig Pablo has made. So, <laughs> so like, that's basically why I just can't be bothered for my own self. Um, and so everyone's motivation is going to be different for, like, why they do things a certain way or what materials they use, and that's okay. And also availability. What you can actually get close to you is a big factor as well. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So I guess maybe the only thing that we can say now is please follow me on TikTok so we can do yeah. live better. <laughs> yeah, we would love to be able to do... We would like to do this live on TikTok. Um... But Pablo needs more followers. So, like, if you're watching this video, again, I will link in the description um, Pablo's TikTok. My TikTok is already always down there, but we'll put Pablo's information down there as well. So, please, please, please check out Pablo. Also, follow me if you're not following me on TikTok already. So, we can be hanging out over on TikTok doing these lives instead of on Instagram in the middle of the day. Which is sad. <laughs> it's a sad time. <laughs> but this this is is slash was uh episode two of unhinged a doll collector podcast so i think pablo what we're doing these every like once a month is yes the goal. we are we are next month we will see you with another super long podcast which pablo is going to edit for us and um i hope you're enjoying it if you are enjoying it Again, please give this video a like, uh, show us some love in the comments. We would like to know like what you want to hear about. Yeah, we're open to anyone suggesting themes to talk about, because at the end of the day, we want to make this also kind of like dynamic to all of us. So, you know. Yeah. And if you're already subscribed, thanks so much for subscribing. What's the next line, Pablo? Um... <laughs> you should start doing the next line. Oh my god. Uh, okay. How it was. I can, I can tell you, because okay, it's please. the same every time. It's, if you're already subscribed, thanks so much for subscribing. And if you're new here and like the content, it would mean a lot if you liked or subscribed. Okay. Something like that. Or if you want to do the first part. You can do the first part, too. <laughs> if you're already subscribed. Was it if you're already subscribed? No. If you're already Thanks subscribed, for watching. if you're already subscribed, thanks so much for subscribing. Okay. 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 So, so thank you so much, everyone, for being already subscribed. <laughs> Close. <laughs> <laughs> if you're already subscribed, thanks so much for subscribing. <laughs> okay. Okay. If you're already subscribed, thanks so much for subscribing. And if you're new here and like the content, don't forget to like and subscribe. As always, I hope you have a fantastic, a fantastic day. day.